just tell you, Officer Brown, I mean, you, you, you're taking money out of my kids' mouths. Sorry. Or you're taking food out of my kids' mouths. Like I, like I said, we, we believe right now that this is drug proceeds, it's currency. Well, I'm going to prove you, to you that it's not. Perfect. A new film on Netflix titled Rebel Ridge is about a veteran fighting back after cops decide to basically steal his money in an unjust civil asset forfeiture. Now, it turns out that the events of that movie played out very similarly in real life, which if you've been following the show for a long time, you shouldn't be surprised by. We've done many segments on civil asset forfeiture and how that gets abused by law enforcement. But let's get back to this story. So a Marine veteran named Stephen Lara had his entire savings, nearly $90,000 taken away by law enforcement, despite the fact that he had not committed a crime. He did nothing wrong. Now, early in the COVID-19 pandemic, He was laid off from his job, as many Americans were. And so to save money, he decided to move in with his parents. Now, here's a description of what initially happened uh, that day, um, as told uh, by a libertarian nonprofit law firm called the Institute for Justice. Take a look. On February 19, 2021, our client Stephen Lara was pulled over outside of Reno by the Nevada Highway Patrol. He was driving to visit his daughters in a small California town just west of Reno. You know, initially I I thought I was getting pulled over uh, because maybe I had expired tags. I had a rental car. Now, uh, the officer actually told Lara that uh, he was driving great, driving well, but wanted to warn him that he was following and passing a tanker truck too closely. So the officer then asked him to get out of his vehicle, which already is a strange request considering he hadn't really done anything wrong. But okay, he was asked to get out of the car. He cooperated and he answered all of the police officer's questions, including questions about the purpose of his trip, uh, his military service in Iraq and Afghanistan, and about whether he had any drugs or weapons in the car. Then the cop asks about money. Large amounts of United States currency in the vehicle. Okay. What's a large amount of U.S. currency to you? Okay. So there's over ten thousand in there. Okay. How much money you got in there? Okay. Oh. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, would you give me permission to search your vehicle today? That's okay with you? Okay. Perfect. Although it's Stephen's right to refuse, he gives the officer permission to search his car. I didn't want to come across as being um, non-cooperative or combative. So I did what I felt was right, and I was very uh, honest, very forthcoming. I was also very respectful, and I just wanted to make their job as easy as possible so that I could be on my way to spend time with my children. Well, unfortunately, it turned out to be a big mistake because look, they did the search of his car. They didn't find anything, no drugs, no firearms, but they did end up finding the bag of cash that Laura had already disclosed to the officer he had in the vehicle. So he later explained that he had brought the cash along with him because his parents were gonna be away, they were going out of town for the weekend and he didn't wanna keep all of that cash in an empty house. In addition to the cash, by the way, he ensured that he had years of ATM withdrawal receipts in his backpack and that's smart. That is very smart because honestly, cops are gonna be suspicious of anyone traveling around with that much cash on them. So having evidence that it's not like money that was obtained through some criminal enterprise is important. Now, critically, driving across state lines with a large amount of cash, not a crime, okay? 
it, it might cause suspicion for the police, but it's not a crime. Nonetheless, the patrol officer called uh, a sergeant from Nevada Highway Patrol and an agent at the DEA. And so the sergeant came and questioned Stephen further and even had a dog come and smell money for drugs. Big mistake because money tends to have trace amounts of drugs on them, especially cocaine. So of course, the uh, dog uh, positive alert, the dog positive alerted um, at the money. And that was all the justification for officers to do what they did. Take a look. What we're going to do, I believe there's drug proceeds, dog alerted to it. Drug proceeds? Yeah, it's very common, sir. We get people that are trafficking large quantities of marijuana from Northern California, all states east, even from Reno. Sir, I, I can tell you so, right now, there's... So, so we're, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen, okay? We're going to seize it today, but that doesn't mean we're the final judgment on it. It's going to go through the DEA, okay? So the DEA will contact you. And the DEA will, will uh, provide you with a means to, um, to fight it. You're going to have to provide your, your pay stubs. You're going to have to provide, provide your other receipts and stuff like that. Guys, this is so wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. The cop said you were driving great. You were just a little too close to a tanker truck. That's that is not enough of a reason to have a motorist step out of their vehicle, then search their car, and then seize all of the cash that they have on them. This is disgusting. So they took Lara's money, and he was left with nothing. Take a look. I just want to let you know, I know you're just doing your job. That money I went through hard for. Money that I have in my jacket is only a few dollars. So he had to get his brother to wire him money because that was literally his life savings. When he got home, he called the DEA, assuming that if the money was legit, they would, you know, return the money to him. Uh, but that's not how things worked out. Uh, a 90 day deadline passed without the government either returning the property, initiating civil forfeiture proceedings in court, or beginning criminal proceedings. At that point, luckily, the Institute for Justice, that's the nonprofit libertarian law firm I was referring to earlier, took on his case pro bono. And they filed a suit against the DEA more than six months after his property was taken from him. The next day, the DEA agreed to return Lara's money with interest, says uh, IJ lawyer Benjamin Field, because they never had a reason to keep it. And he was lucky to get the money back, but the whole ordeal still had consequences. Losing his life savings for six straight months disrupted his plans to buy a house uh, to be near his daughters. And believe it or not, this is legal. This is something we've been covering and talking about for years. And while there's been a lot of talk about criminal justice reform, it is shocking to me that this issue has not been dealt with at all. Under the civil forfeiture law, the government can seize and keep your property if it merely suspects the property is connected to a crime. Often, the government doesn't have to offer any proof nor does the property owner have to be charged with a crime for the government to seize the property. That's a problem, and that should change. The fact that it hasn't changed yet is really infuriating. Okay, because he got lucky, John, that there was this nonprofit law firm willing to step in and help him get his money back. But there are countless other Americans who have been victimized in a similar way, and they never got their property returned to them. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the system at multiple levels is set up to advantage the cops. Uh, I, I understand you might need to seize some things sometimes if you believe that they're about to be used in the pursuit of a crime or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you can seize it for two days while you find evidence to justify continuing seizing. Six months? Six months at, in best case scenario, it's that's insane. All, all that was, like, you know, you, you hear stories about people traveling 
you know, in, in other countries or whatever, and like the cops stop him and oh, just you gotta set a hand over a bunch of money. And we're like, oh, thank God we don't live in that sort of society. No, you do. You you potentially do. They can just it's worse than being robbed on the road. Because presumably, if you're just robbed by straight up criminals, maybe the cops will do something. But when it's the cops robbing you, they're like the er criminals. There's no one above them to do anything. Maybe the DEA, you know, if Netflix gets involved, maybe. But other than that, it's just so utterly unacceptable. It's funny too, because just this weekend, John Oliver did his whole episode was about, about this, about protectual stops from cops. But they're following you, and you could see in the video, like, oh, he's following that truck too close. Hmm. He might be about to kill a bunch of people. Like, it's absolute nonsense. And they have outlawed it in some places since then, since mm-hmm. um, the last couple of years. But it needs, like, you need something federal. But the issue is that mm-hmm. you, you can't criticize the cops. Like, if any, if it would have to be the Democrats, if they were to propose any sort of limitations on the cops, then you just have another election cycle where people are implying that this is the Democrat plan to allow cartels to take over America. And we need the seizures to fight back against cartels. That's why it's so hard to reform the cops. Let's actually give the audience a real world example of the federal government attempting to do this, namely under Democratic leadership to Obama's credit. So there was a lot of backlash to this. And as a result, in 2015, Obama's Attorney General Eric Holder uh, limited civil asset forfeiture uh, cases in which the feds uh, could adopt a local seizure and then kick back money. Because that's really what a lot of police departments had been doing. You know, They were using these uh, seized assets to increase the amount of money their department had, right? It was a way of generating revenue for the department, which is so sick. But holders restrictions were then reversed in 2017 by then Trump Attorney General Jeff Sessions. In 2019, federal agencies made $334 million in adoption payments to state and local law enforcement. And that money is stolen money from, well, I'm not gonna say that in every case because there are instances where property will be seized because it's necessary for an investigation. But that's not the case in a lot of these cases. And so some of the, I guess, improvements that we saw under Obama were unfortunately immediately reversed under the Trump administration. So there you have it.